was um, a, a fantastic introduction. And uh, if I can now invite uh, Jürgen and Karina uh, to come and brief us a little bit more about the uh, guidance package and, uh, and outline also a little bit about um, what are these uh, content notes. Thank you. <coughs> so, do you have a uh, this is a no, we, you can start the presentation or not? Uh, yeah. Oh, right. Are you okay with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm okay with that. So, my uh, name is Jürgen Hohmann. I'm uh, from uh, the DEFCO part. Uh, of that initiative, uh, which is a <coughs> cross-service uh, initiative. And uh, why we have to call that unique, what we heard from, from our director? Because we are often talking about working uh, beyond silos, but it's not so easy. Our organizations and your organizations might be the same and not prepared for that. So we are more linked to our own teams, to our own units, to work across our own institution, but to have a team beyond that, that is something else that made it special. And this, this requires certain layers. It's not only that we have been working across three different uh, DG services, um, that we needed project management and we needed experts. So this idea only started within the commission. It started in the, uh, in the aftermath uh, of the uh, World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul, where we realized that the EU strategy on social protection is not prepared to work across the nexus. That all that what is linked to humanitarian aid is just not part of that uh, DEFCO developed strategy on social protection. Uh, <coughs> which has been uh, written down in, a, um, in, in that strategy. But instead of making, an, a new, um, making it new, we said, let's first look at what is there. And there we were very grateful of having support from experts and from the, from the team, from, uh, from the project management knowledge to find out how to make it. And it went not only three years, it went through three phases. It went through a scoping mission. The idea of the document that has been published two months ago was, is already one and a half years old. And uh, the main person behind that is Cécile Cherrier. It was predominantly your idea as leader of the first and second phase to make the document and structure the document in that way. But it took us quite some time to bring it to that what it is. And <coughs> the document itself, it's only one part of that guidance package. The guidance package goes beyond it. It is the basis. It is the, it, this lies the thematic foundation, but it has more than that. We have additional 10 notes that we are, where we are going to present to you four of them in the course of today. We have as part of it something like a technical aid facility where we provided uh, on-demand services to <coughs> EU delegations and echo field offices in two countries, in Somalia and in Lebanon. And Rick Goodman is with us here. He provided that in the name of that uh, uh, guidance package initiatives. And it resulted <coughs> into bigger programs supported by different kind of programs on uh, the trust fund in Lebanon and the project finance base in, in Somalia. And the, it was worse not only to make desk work, but to go directly on the ground. There are several knowledge sharing <coughs> um, um, instruments. We had two seminars, we had different webinars, we are on socialprotection.org. So it's much larger than just a single document. The document itself that has been distributed to, to you, it's, a, it's more valuable if you look at that online <laughs> because then you have access 
to all the interviews and all the 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 uh, uh, connection that's uh, that are linked to it. Uh, you can only see it in this uh, printed version, uh, but that makes make, makes it worth to look at the online version. What we learned so far is by developing that reference document is the rationale of working in social protection in crisis. And we were not the only one. Other actors, other development partners, we have already, we're already investing in that. UNICEF, for instance, was already part of a SPIAG-B working group on that. DFID supported the Oxford management policy uh, in develop a shock responsive uh, <coughs> social protection a proposal or a research. So we concentrated on two separate edges and on the outer edges of that on countries in most, in, in most fragile countries and countries and situations of forced displacement. Um, <coughs> the the uh, instruments have been, have shown evidence that it is possible to work with social protection a, in that whole sphere and this whole continuum, but it it was a bit different than we were when, when we were thinking at the beginning because we thought that it goes from uh, humanitarian support directly uh, into national systems with a linear link over certain periods of time, but we learned through the process uh, that that's not the way. This is one possibility only. It can remain humanitarian, it can become national, it can go quickly into the national system, but it's multifaceted, and that makes it also very interesting. So I don't go further within this. Uh, as I said, I'm happy to be surrounded by our team. <laughs> I'm happy to be surrounded by the authors. I also like to, uh, um, to mention George Arove, who's also one of the co-authors of that document. And the other authors I will not name because you will present, you have the, the chance to present yourself thereafter. So before we continue, we move forward to having a look into what is the guidance package initiatives uh, by, um, with a video, and I hope I can start uh, that. You can make that better. Um, I don't know how to. I thought that this is this way. Okay. Working with social protection in countries affected by crisis presents many challenges, not least because of the difficult context. We live in a world of shrinking resources but growing needs. To ensure longer term, sustainable and shock sensitive solutions, there is a growing consensus that development and humanitarian communities have to work closer together from the very beginning. Humanitarian crises are increasing, our resources are relatively decreasing. Humanitarian and development partners need to work together to assess commonly the needs, the priorities and the approaches that we will use and the transition through the nexus. We need to do this so that we use resources wisely and also that we establish our exit strategies at the same time throughout the process we support the development of national capacities to hand over to national authorities in a mature system because eventually it is their responsibility to take forward social protection. There is a wealth of knowledge on providing social protection in relatively stable environments. When it comes to crisis contexts, however, the field is still relatively new. To aid in this process and to provide development and humanitarian staff with latest insights and strategies, the three DGs of the European Commission, DG Devco, DG Echo and DG Near, have created a guidance package on social protection across the humanitarian development nexus. Social protection is a cost-cutting issue. 
this cannot be done from, uh, from uh, people responsible for only one of the sectors. You need them all together. You need different views, you need a variety of perspectives and experiences. The guidance package includes an overview reference document on the current body of knowledge, providing links to existing guidance on more stable countries technical, sectoral and thematic content notes that provide operational guidance and specifies critical issues for decisions on benefit modalities, working with stakeholders, addressing vulnerabilities through program design and in different crises and in preparation for shocks. Case studies, including Iraq, Lebanon, Somalia, Kyrgyzstan and other countries that highlight a variety of approaches to build shock-sensitive social protection systems in crisis settings. Think pieces providing insights on latest research and policy development. What feeds into uh, this living package are two things. We have first-hand of experts that have just written additional notes. So people are in their thinking of the writing process. We have information, we, uh, we have uh, e-learning web webinars, but we have also personal face-to-face -face -face seminars uh, and all together makes, uh, makes the different formats of the package. The guidance package uh, provides uh, a very comprehensive uh, overview of how to work uh, when trying to support uh, social protection approaches in crisis contexts. Uh, it's, it's unique in the sense it pushes the agenda that we should do this more in uh, not the traditional context where we usually have been supporting social protection in middle income countries relatively stable with a relatively well-functioning uh, social protection uh, mechanism, but push the agenda into more uh, fragile, conflict, uh, displacement affected settings. It presents typologies on how to uh, implement this. It presents case studies where we have good examples of what have we done, examples that we can learn from. Uh, it also gives a background on why we are doing this. The guidance package on social protection across the humanitarian and development nexus is available on EU Learn, Devco Academy, Capacity for Dev and socialprotection.org. Let's suppose that you're writing a really Yeah, just click somewhere, uh, this one. Uh, yes, and my name is Karina Saivano uh, from ECHO. Uh, C1 is the name of the policy unit. I've seen B3 and B1. <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, this is um, after this uh, uh, self-explanatory introduction on what uh, the SPAN, the Social Protection Across Humanitarian Development Nexus is and why we're doing it. I would just draw your attention to this last uh, slide, which also uh, coincides with the last chapter of the, uh, the Social Protection Guidance Package, uh, which deals with key features, uh, key, key features of uh, social protection responses in crisis settings. And just briefly, because we will uh, the whole afternoon hear more about this, we, we during the process, I, we, uh, we have identified four or four or five, but four different blocks uh, where, we s where, we, where we also identified the need to go into more in-depth uh, analysis uh, to find out more and provide more guidance. We have the design phase, uh, we have the operations, we had a uh, discussion on the financing, and, and then also discussion on something we call principles of engagement. In all these four blocks I just mentioned, we identified where we wanted or needed some additional guidance. For instance, uh, during the design phase, the context uh, analysis, the targeting, the benefit modalities and the stakeholders analysis is a key, key aspect of that. And we will hear shortly more about different types of benefit modalities. How are we to engage, especially in a more challenging context of fragility, conflict and forced displacement? 
uh, and we will hear more about that. And I, 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 I mean, cash transfers if, is, of course, one uh, entry point, but we will hear more also about how do we go beyond cash transfers, especially in these more challenging contexts. When it comes to stakeholders, that's also, uh, and, and sorry, the, 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 highlighted, the, the highlighted four would, the, would be the ones we talk about today, but here you have the whole list of all the, the, uh, the content and sectorial notes and the con contextual notes we have, we have finalized. Again, for the stakeholder analysis, it's also key to know with whom are we to engage in these contexts and, 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 and the necessity to have a solid uh, stakeholder analysis. Um, um, when it comes to the contextual note coming from ECHO, this is also very, uh, very important. We, we discussed the principles of engagement when we, di when we engage in situations of conflict, fragility and, and also forced displacement, which, which has components of, of, of the others. It's important to apply a do-no-harm approach, but, but what does a do-no-harm approach mean? Uh, I mean, we all know uh, wherever, uh, whatever we engage, there, there will be impacts of, of our actions. So we need to go a bit beyond the do-no-harm. So what kind of analysis do we need to do? On ECHO's side now, we're talking a lot about conflict sensitivity analysis, which needs to be undertaken from B needs to be done by all parties to uh, to uh, um, engage in that specific context and working in that specific context. Uh, so I'm looking for sorry I'm looking forward to the discussion we will have with uh, with Georgia and Cecil today on especially on the fragility and forced displacement uh, content notes. So this was just a brief introduction of what we will discuss now this afternoon. Thank you. I could now invite 